and then and then we kiss and it was it was grisly. My name is Redden Richardson and I'm in the class of 2017. I grew up um, in this tiny little two bedroom flat in this suburb called Oakley in Melbourne. And my aunt on my mum's side would always nickname it the birdcage because it was so small. Whenever there was a play date, I'd always wait to be asked. I'd never ask anyone over to our place. And the next day at school, this sort of went around to everyone that Raiden lives in a flat. The, the priorities of people growing up in the suburbs are money and they are just like making ends meet. So I guess writing for me took off really when I started reading and what reading meant for me. And I remember my mum being what I guess one could call as a tiger mum. Right, Paul, who's my dad, you have to do this today. You have to clean this or sort this out. And Rhett, who's my brother, would have to do this math thing. And she said, Raiden, you have to read a book today. And I remember the first book I ever read, ever read by myself was called The Gruffalo. And so he walks back and he shows all the snake and the owl, look at this Gruffalo that I have. And the Gruffalo is this big scary monster, but he's really peaceful. And I remember feeling this great sense of satisfaction, having constructed and crafted this entire world in my head from just having read something. Somewhere amidst there, maybe when I was eight or nine, I started writing these little stories about dinosaurs. I love dinosaurs. Growing up, at least, I was very happy to be alone. And I very much enjoyed my own mind and my, my, my own imagination. The role of my high school in my life has been in just so instrumental. Melbourne High School was and is for me like the one place that I can think of just so clearly and conclusively is about merit and only about merit. The motto is honour the work and the work will honour you. And this simple idea of if you put in and if you commit to something, there will be a return, it will be for you. And I was there with my dad thinking about, I want to go to the footy tomorrow, I want to watch Richmond my team win, I'm not really interested in this, but let's see how it goes. For the math section, I was completely at C. They probably had 60 questions of which I answered 20 and guessed C for the rest of them. I said, C is going to be my letter today and that's what I'll put in. I know very easily if I had to put a B, I probably wouldn't have gotten into the school and things would be very different. But I put C and then found out I got in because I remember so clearly my final assembly and this is at a point where we're now being addressed no longer as boys but as gentlemen by the principal. My closest friends Richard and Jack and Sean. Sean's a huge guy, probably one of the biggest guys we knew. Once we sing the, the school song for the last time, he's just, his face is red, he's crying, he's just weeping and the whole full of guys just crying and hugging one another and signing their shirts. So when you're at an all boys school, everyone gets sort of ticked off one by one for having their first kiss. And I had been really, really interested in this girl. I asked her I wanted to be her boyfriend after like three dates. And she stopped me in the, in the mall on this lift and she just said, no. First time overseas was to come here actually. I'd never traveled before that. I got my passport when I was 18. I remember the first night staying, I felt so incredibly homesick. I just really, really, really wanted my mum. More than I've ever wanted her in my life. Thankfully met a guy called KJ. Before even introducing himself, surprised me in our dorm room we were staying out and he said, all right, mate, get a shirt on, we're going out. We're looking for a Turkish guy. I said, all right, sure, do we have a phone? He says, no. He says, we're going to this place called Marina Bay Sands. So we get there to the bottom of Tower 3 or something. We're looking for this Turkish guy. <laughs> with absolutely no possibility of finding him. 